Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So yesterday I went into Manchester because that's where my office is, where I work, and obviously I went into Waterstones. Like, my office is like literally around the corner from Waterstones, like it's not even a two minute walk, so obviously I'm gonna go in on the way home. Like I can't help it, I literally can't. <laughs> so I thought I would do a little kind of Waterstones vlog, you know, just a little book haul. I don't know, I just I just wanted a reason to go to Waterstones basically and I thought I would film it and that would be my reason. So I bought, I bought a lot of books. I have them all here. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books. <laughs> I had no intention of buying any books and I got eight. So if that doesn't tell you the type of person I am, I don't really know what will. Yeah, I took a nice little kind of bit of vlog footage for the video and then I will quickly run through the books that I got, but I'm very excited about these books. Um, a lot of them were impulse buys that I had no intention of getting before I went into Waterstones, but I am extremely happy with all the purchases. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you do, please hit that like button, comment down below, and if you want to subscribe, that would be really nice. But, and if you do, if you hit that notification bell, you'll be notified any time I post. Let's just get into this wonderful Waterstones vlog. I absolutely love doing these videos because I get books out of them, so yeah, let's just get into it.
So these are the books that I got. I got two with black sprayed edges and that wasn't intentional, it just happened that way, but it was a nice little coincidence. Okay, I'm gonna start with the biggest one and I've actually already started this <laughs> because I couldn't help myself and I'm already that way through, but it is a graphic novel, so. Um, I got the first of Attack on Titan, their first omnibus. So this is volumes one, two, and three. I absolutely love the TV show of Attack on Titan. I've watched it maybe three times now, I'm pretty sure. I've never read it. So I was like, well, I saw it in the shops. It was 17 pounds, so it was a little bit of a splurge for me, but I, as I've said, I've been wanting to get into more graphic novels and manga and why not read something that I already know that I really love. And I'm really, really enjoying it so far. I've just come to realize just how much the show is like word for word what happens in the manga and i love that i love how true it is to the to the original story so yeah if you enjoyed the tv show you're gonna love this if you love you know if you enjoy the anime you're gonna love this it's like literally word for word and it's so good the artwork is phenomenal the titans are freaky as anything like they're so scary i treated myself to that and i'm really really enjoying it so far i probably will finish it today because i just don't want to put it down yeah so that was the first one i got i'm very excited by it so this next book was a complete impulse buy and i hadn't heard anything about it but i saw it it had black sprayed edges it was buy one get one half off um and i really liked the author so it was like win 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 so I got First Person Singular by Murakami. Got black sprayed edges. It's beautiful and it's full of um, like short stories. It's eight, eight stories. So I'll read the synopsis uh, because it's, it's full of eight different stories within the book, but uh, it sounds really interesting. In these eight stories, international best-selling author Haruki Murakami explores the world from his own utterly unique perspective. From the imaginative to the intimate, he moves from an alternate history of the legendary jazz musician Charlie Parker to a man reminiscing about his childhood girlfriend. These stories encompass his great enthusiasms for baseball, jazz and the Beatles and demonstrate his singular mesmerising voice. These stories are unmistakably Murakami's. Each one has insights that remain with you long after they are done. It just sounds like a really fulfilling book. I feel like I will get a lot out of reading this. I, co I couldn't, I couldn't not. <laughs> so I yes also picked up that my other black sprayed edge book unintentional again um I got how to kill your family mom and dad if you're watching um it's nothing personal <laughs> um and this is by Bella Mackey I don't really know a great deal about this I just know that it's doing really well on the book charts at the minute and I tend to like if something's doing well on the book charts I feel like that there's a good you know it's gonna be a good book so yes I got how to kill your family and I just love the color the colour scheme with the pink and black like it's really bold and really like spoke to me um so i will read the synopsis they say you can't choose your family but you can kill them <laughs> meet gracie bernard daughter sister serial killer grace has lost everything and she will stop at nothing to get revenge oh the spray edges just smell weird <laughs> oh they smell inky um yeah so i got how to kill your family again mom and dad nothing personal don't read anything into this I then picked up a book that I've heard incredible things about, but not on BookTok. I think I mentioned it a few videos back where I went on like, you know, the top 100 books you need to read before you die. And I quite enjoy going on those um, book lists because obviously a lot of the time the books on there are really fantastic and I want, I want to read good books. Um, and on there was this book, which is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. And uh, yeah, I've not read it and I really wanted to read it. And even when I was going in uh, up to the till to pay for it, the Warstones employee, the girl was like, that's a really good book. And I was like, I know I've heard, I've heard really good things. She was like, yeah, it's a really good book. So I think it's going to be good. But I will read the synopsis of this because it sounds awesome. So it's set in Korea in 1911. Teenage Sunja, the adored daughter of a crippled fisherman, falls for a wealthy Yakuza. He promises her the world, but when she discovers she is pregnant and that her lover is married, she refuses to be bought. Facing ruin, she accepts an offer of marriage from a gentle minister passing through on his way to Japan. Following a man she barely knows to a hostile country where she has no friends, Sunja will be forced to make some difficult choices. Her decisions will echo through the decades. It just sounds like a really emotional story that I think will really... The I think the character development will be beautiful in this book. I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic and I'm so looking forward to reading this. I've heard nothing but wonderful things about this book. Um, I then, I mentioned a while ago, I don't know if I mentioned on here, BookTok or Bookstagram, 
I've got too many platforms at this point, but I did mention that I wanted to do a video of like the last five Booker Prize winners and the 2021 Booker Prize winner was on sale and I was like, well, I really want it. So I got The Promise. This is by Damon Galgut. And I literally did not read the synopsis because I saw that it was a Booker Prize winner. I knew I wanted to do the video, so I instantly picked it up. Um, I'm gonna read the synopsis now with you guys my first time impression with you i honestly didn't read it because i knew i wanted to do this video so i knew i needed the book anyway a family in crisis a promise unfulfilled on a farm outside pretoria the swartz are gathering for mars funeral the younger generation anton and amor detest everything the family stand for not least their treatment of the black woman who has worked for them her whole life salome was to be given her own house her own land yet somehow that vow is carefully ignored as each decade passes and the family assemble again, one question hovers over them. Can you ever escape the repercussions of a broken promise? That sounds hard. That sounds like re like really hard hitting, but I do find that a lot of the Booker Prize winners tend to be of that kind of genre. The really impactful messages, um, yeah, and difficult books to read, but important books to read. So yes, I got the promise and I'm very excited to do that video. I then went into the works, which if you don't know what the works is in the UK, it's just like a very cheap stationery shop, but they also sell books at like really cheap prices. So I picked up the X-Hex, which is by Erin Sterling. And I have seen this on BookTok kind of all over. It's like a witchy rom-com, apparently. Uh, you can't see because of the big old sticker, but there is a witch underneath there. Um, let me just try and peel it off while I talk. Um, but yeah, I did see it all over BookTok. Um, I've seen predominantly good things, but I have seen a couple of people say that they were really disappointed that they didn't enjoy it, even though it was very highly like advertised. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, so witchy rom-com. Um, I'll give it a try. I then picked up Girl in Pieces by Kathleen Glasgow. Now I'm pretty sure this again is a really difficult book. Um, and I'm not 100% sure what it's about, but I have an inkling that it's about self-harm. So I'm going to read the synopsis and see what you guys think. So it says, you can spot the girls who have it easy, and then there is me. Charlotte Davis is in pieces. At 17, she's already lost more than most people do in a lifetime. But she's learned how to forget. The broken glass washes away the sorrow until there is nothing but calm. You don't have to think about your father and the river, your best friend who is gone forever, or your mother who has nothing left to give you. A deeply moving portrait of a girl in a world that owes her nothing yet has taken so much and her long journey back from the edge. Again, that sounds like a really hard hitting, difficult book to read, but I think it will be very important. I've heard great things about it. Um, I'm a little bit nervous about, about reading this one, to be honest. Um, I will check the trigger warnings beforehand, but I'm usually I'm usually okay with trigger warnings to be fair. Um, there are only a few things that really get to me that I, I can't, like animal abuse in a book is a big, big no-no. There have been a few times where animal abuse has happened and I've had to just stop the book because I can't. <laughs> so that's kind of my only trigger warning really. Um, so yeah, I think I should be okay, but I am, I am going to check trigger warnings just in case. Uh, so yeah, I got Girl in Pieces, and then my very last one was a non-fiction that has been recommended to me literally so many times, uh, and it is The Power of Geography by Tim Marshall. Yeah, this is an extremely popular non-fiction book, um, and it basically breaks down the geography of the world. It has showed how every nation's choices are limited by mountains, rivers, seas, and concrete. Since then, the geography hasn't changed, but the world has. In this new book, Marshall explores 10 regions that are set to shape global politics in a new age of great power rivalry. Australia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, the UK, Greece, Turkey, the Sahel, Ethiopia, Spain and space. I wasn't expecting space. <laughs> Find out why Europe's next refugee crisis is closer than it thinks as trouble brews in the Sahel, why the Eastern Mediterranean is one of the most volatile flashpoints of the 21st century and why the Earth's atmosphere is set to become the world's next battleground. The Power of Geography is a gripping exploration of the ways geography can shape humanity's past, present and future. This is not a book I would normally go for, but it's just been so highly recommended to me and it has changed so many different people's opinions of the current world issues. And um, yeah, I'm all about enlightening myself and learning 
uh, so I did get the power of geography and it was half off so not gonna lie that's probably the main reason I got it I've been wanting it anyway but when I saw it was half off I was like okay I'm gonna have to nab it there you go those are the eight books that I bought it's, it's unusual for me to go for these kinds of um, um, books but I was obviously in a mood for a hard-hitting book that day so I ended up buying eight of them well minus Attack on Titan obviously uh, but yes I am extremely excited by all of them it's just another big pile of books to add to my ever-growing TBR. Whether I will ever actually get to them, I don't know at this point. Um, but yeah, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed coming to Waterstones with me. I do go into the office very often, so I think I might start making this a series of just like, what's new at Waterstones? But hopefully I won't buy eight books at a time because um, I don't have enough money as it is. Because I won't have any money left. <laughs> and I need to pay bills and buy food. So yes, I really hope that you enjoyed this video um, and I will see all of you lovely people in the next one. All right, bye guys.